Glad to have you on this edition of the show. Our tech tip segment is on how to turn your smartphone into remote control. Our mobile app of the week allows you to ask questions to get answers. And finally, we have a cool gift for you on the giveaway segment. This is Tech Trends, and I'm Chukomeka Agbata. A new palm-sized robot is competing to become a favorite toy, equipped with a cheeky personality and hopes for a possible future entertainment franchise. Cosmo, a palm-sized microbot armed with sensors, motors and visual capabilities and controlled using a smartphone, is the latest production from San Francisco-based robotic startup Anki. The computer vision. We're running an extremely complicated... Cosmo is not the first smartphone-controlled robotic toy. Similar products are available that can teach kids to code or just play games and perform tricks such as Pharaoh's popular smartphone-controlled Star Wars BB-8 droid. But most robot toys do not come equipped with the capability to learn over time. Cosmo is uh, very sophisticated. Uh, there's almost uh, over 300 components that go inside of him. Uh, a lot of computation, a lot of sensors, a lot of motors. Uh, he has a camera which he uses for computer vision to understand his environment. Um, and so as a character, um, he's uh, uh, you know, he's, he's like this little robot buddy of yours, um, but he's like a little newbie who starts out like very basic. Uh, he wants to be this Jedi master, but he's not quite there yet. So he has to kind of uncover his skills and learn games and, and activities that he can do and get better at them. Um, and you're there to help him along. Cosmo's personality is driven by artificial intelligence as he learns to recognize familiar faces and play games such as Quick Tap, in which he challenges a player to match colors. When he loses a game, he throws his building blocks in a tantrum, and when he wins, he likes to show off. Um, our inspiration was, uh, you know, as we were looking at these movies from Pixar, from DreamWorks, and these incredible characters, we started asking what would it take to make a character like that actually come to life in the real world, and not just in terms of like emotional expressiveness, but truly in understanding their environment using robotics, AI to uh, recognize people, recognize objects, play games, and feel like they're actually alive. The playful hat woman bot seen in animated films such as Wall E and co designed by a former Pixar animator inspired Cosmo. Every relationship he builds is tagged to each unique person. So he'll recognize your face and he'll respond to you every time you play with him. So it's almost like a puppy where um, he'll have an ingrained personality but will have a unique relationship with everybody in the household. Um, but then over time, uh, you know, he'll recognize what games you like to play, um, you know, what, uh, what you don't like to play, how you interact with him, and he'll kind of tailor himself to that. Anki envisions a future on the big screen for Cosmo, including new robot friends and a possible weekly episodic series. So we're thinking about uh, uh, about this as the first of hopefully many characters, and in some sense we're um, you know looking at the franchise as a studio for interactive uh, characters and stories. Um, and so when we release a second character, um, that character will have its own capabilities, personality, emotions, backstory with Cosmo. They'll have their own interactions and relationships. Um, and when you have multiple characters, it makes it exponentially uh, diverse in terms of what's possible uh, with them interacting with each other. Among wider public concerns of how apps can collect data from users to pass on to other parties, Selfman and Cosmo pair solely with individual user smartphones and no information leaves the device. So, mischievous little robot. Packed, that's because I didn't want to play with him. <laughs> yeah. The biggest players in China's ride-hailing service market are joining forces as U.S. giant Uber has sold its China operation to rival DD Chuxing. Experts estimate more and deeper cooperation to develop between the two companies. The merger announcement came only days after China's state council granted the legal status to the industry, also the world's first state-level regulation on online ride-hailing services. According to the deal, Didi Xiongxin will acquire Uber's China operations. In return, Uber gets a near 20% stake in the merged company. Gurley says Uber has invested roughly $2 billion in China 
and comes away with a $7 billion share of a rapidly expanding Chinese company. There have been some people labeling the deal as surrendering or waving the white flag, which Gurley cannot agree with. You know, I look at it this way. You know, if any other startup in Silicon Valley were selling today for $7 billion, everyone would be writing about what an amazing outcome that it was. And there's a strong likelihood that China will be the biggest ride-sharing market in the world. But on top of that, you know, the U.S. market has evolved to a place where car ownership is, is pervasive. You know, China, that's not true at all, right? And so you have an opportunity to leapfrog car ownership. Didi will also invest $1 billion in Uber's operations in other parts of the world. It doesn't make sense for a U.S. startup going to China late and try to do a lot on its own. And it's a completely new, different market. It operates uh, with dealing with the government's completely different. I think Travis is also very strategic at doing this deal because he knows that there are other markets beyond car sharing that he can go after. And he also knows that, you know, at some point in the future, it is possible that a, a Google or an Amazon will aggressively go into this market. In addition, he sees potential synergy between the companies that go beyond ride hailing services. I think uh, uh, logistics are new things that these two companies can now do more of uh, in the markets they're in. The merger between the big two obviously means Didi becomes even more dominant on his home turf. But it also raises interesting questions about competition in other markets like the U.S. Didi has recently invested and partnered with the ride service company Lyft, which is Uber's main competitor. As part of China's National Space Science Center under the Chinese Academy of Sciences' fast-expanding space science program, the country plans to launch five new satellites within five years. The five satellites, including a Sino-European joint mission known as SMILE, will focus on observation of solar activities and their impact on the Earth environment and space, weather analysis of water recycling and probing of black holes. Of the five satellites, SMILE is set to blast off in 2021. The satellite is designed to study the effects of the sun on the Earth's environment and space weather by creating images of the interactions between solar winds and the Earth's magnetosphere with X-ray and ultraviolet technology. MIT, the Magnetosphere Ionosphere Thermosphere Coupling Exploration, aims at investigating the origin of upflow ions and their acceleration mechanism and discover the key mechanism for the magnetosphere, ionosphere and thermosphere coupling. The Water Cycle Observation Mission is a bid to understand the Earth's water cycle by simultaneous and fast measurement of key parameters such as soil moisture, ocean salinity and ocean surface evaporation. The other two satellites are the Advanced Space Born Solar Observatory and the Einstein Probe. The Advanced Space Born Solar Observatory will help scientists understand the causality among magnetic fields, flares, and coronal mass ejections, while the Einstein Probe is tasked with discovering quiescent black holes, overall astrophysical mass ranges, and other compact objects via high energy transients. The Advanced Space Born Solar Observatory is China's first solar exploration satellite, ending the nation's history of depending on foreign solar observation data.